Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. This is part two of our Ham International Concorde Mark II that we'll be doing some modifications to. In the previous episode, we tested this radio out, made sure it was working, and we fitted a Spectrum VCO to it. And we got that locked and aligned. So we have some PCBs from JLC PCB. So let's have a look and see what these PCBs are. So in the future, JLC PCB will be sponsoring me. But as of this video, these were not under the sponsorship, I had bought these myself. But I managed to work out a deal with JLC PCB that they will sponsor me in the future, which is absolutely amazing of them. If you do fancy any PCBs from JLC PCB, there's a link in the description below. So here we have my latest creation. Now this at the moment, this, this design is untested, but the circuitry is tested. So I've no reason to believe that this shouldn't work. So what we have here is a PCB that will plug in to where the PLL O2A lives and the PLL will then go onto this board along with a PIC chip and hopefully if my programming is correct this will give us 40 below the lowest crystal and UK 40 FM um, proper readout as you can see it's quite a small board we've got some quite small surface mount on the back which I have to do to keep the size down but hopefully this should sit above the components that are around the PLL and allow us to put the PLL actually slot it into place where the PLL lives just bring three wires off so we fitted some sockets on it because I don't want to solder in directly yet until I've decided it's working So there we are, it's fully constructed, there's not much to it really. Just some 2.54 right angle pin headers, three wires, and obviously the IC sockets. And in the um, in the final design, well, the, when I finally use it, I probably won't socket the pick, but I'll socket the PLL. But for this test unit, it's looking pretty good. So to get this thing working, we need to program a pick chip. Now the code I actually wrote for this took quite a long while. I had to get a sheet with all the binary and work out which which binary to use for which channel which inputs which was quite hard but once you got the hang of it it was actually quite easy but yeah there's been some work done around that PLL so we'll clean that up but first things first carefully out with this PLL 2 AG I think that's 25th week of 1980 on the, uh, the, uh, the chip the data manufacturer And even though there hasn't been any modifications to this radio that I can see, somebody's had a lot of playing with that around those um, pins. And I know which pins those are for. Those are for the um, 
think it's the, the highest bit. But luckily this design doesn't use those pins because the PLL is on the board interfaced with that pick chip and that's what controls those. So it's not actually that bad. I just need to make sure that earth wire is connected to that component and the other two are fine. There it is in place. It fits quite nicely. You just have to make sure it's not pushed back against the channel switch. So we're on the PLL, uh, PLL uh, the VCO test point there, just monitoring the VCO voltage. And channel 1 and 40 mid band work, which is a good sign. Because even though that's one of the stock frequencies, it's still going via the pick chip. Frequency is still a bit low, but it's fine. That's a um, that's super high band. Back down to mid band again. So I'm just checking some channels here. I'll have to go through each channel to make sure that it's actually correct. And as you can see, we've got a fault in the code there already. So I'll just need to go away and fix that. Luckily, there's only a couple of small errors with the code. There's a couple of ones where there shouldn't have been ones. But that was easily fixed. Quick reprogram of the pick. And everything seems to be working quite nicely. So we'll connect these two wires together, which should give us UKFM. So we need it to be in the mid-band position. There we have it, 601 for channel 1. And 991 for channel 40 can obviously alter the KC shift to bring that bang on but for that testing purpose that was amazing so let's connect these two together which should give us 40 below the lowest crystal so on this radio the lowest crystal is the mid band crystal so this should give us low band so we'll switch the KC shift off and correct, we have low band, 26515 being channel 1 low band. So that's working nicely. I'm not going to go through every single channel on here, but I did to make sure that every channel was correct. So all in all, very happy with how it's going at the moment. And then we have my test unit still, still inside the radio. I will take this out and I will take the socket off the pick in the final one that I'll leave in this radio. But as for a first test... I'm very happy with this. It works as expected. It's a complete plug-in unit. There's no tracks needed to be cut, which was always the thing with the EEPROM on this. You needed to cut all the tracks and join loads of wires. This one, you just take the PLL out, put the PLL onto this board, plug this in, and it works. And it's compact and it looks really good anyway stay tuned for the next episode thank you very much for watching